So I've been thinking that I've been too focused on price of trading cards and quite possibly the trading card industry as a whole is as well. But maybe it's just me becoming more aware of price by being more into the hobby. Or maybe it's my age and money being more of a concern or it could just be the internet and easy access to all the information. But I think I've become too focused on price and I'd like to get back into the collecting aspect of the hobby more. And if I were to imagine a pin collector, I don't think they go and buy a pin wondering, oh, what is this going to be worth in 10 years? I'd imagine they just go about their day, maybe they're in a store or browsing stuff online and they see a pin they like and they'd like to add it to their collection and it's just what's cool to them and what the pin means to them. It's not thinking of a monetary gain it'll bring them in the future, it's just what they enjoy in the moment. And the first thing I collected was coins and my mom collected coins and She'd save her change in a piggy bank and we'd put the change all out on the table and we'd search for the missing years and the coins and it was always an excitement finding the coin that you were missing or the year that you were missing and it wasn't like that quarter was more valuable than any of these other quarters. They're all worth only 25 cents and I didn't think they'd be worth more valuable in the future. They're 25 cents now and they're gonna be 25 cents in the future and I had a few other coins that my grandma gave me to collect and a nice $20 gold coin and some nice coins representing the months and the different provinces of Canada along with the different nominations of currency with some really cool animals on them and I really enjoyed them and thought they were cool and then I had my Pokemon cards and this is my Blastoise from my childhood and it's my most valued card I own and it's not the greatest condition but I wouldn't want to trade this for a perfect condition one and same would go for this Charizard that I traded my blue eyes white dragon for this Charizard and both these cards mean a lot to me and they have a story and you can't just buy that somewhere they're more than that and when a new Pokemon set comes out I go and I look up all the cards that are in the set and I see the hits that I want and I open the box and if I get one it's really great it's, it's really it's exciting but when I don't it's disappointing and I think that opening a box shouldn't be disappointing, It's it should be fun and it's like a childhood dream to open a full box, that's incredible and I find people open box so fast nowadays and I'm not sure, it's very likely just for content but I think there's lots of people who do open boxes that fast and I understand it, they're just looking for that hit card, they don't want all the other cards in it. But, but why couldn't this card be just as valuable as this card or why couldn't it mean just as much to me because it's not as fancy or because someone told me the value the card isn't as valuable to me that I pulled these two cards um, at the same time and I was so much more interested in this card and I thought it was so beautiful and a nice card. And after I went and looked up the prices and found out this one is like 10 times the value and I guess it almost started making me like this one more and in a previous video I was kind of criticizing this card but it's actually really beautiful and a nice card and I saw someone showing off their ETB opening and they had sleeved up their full hollows and their nice card and they just had this one sleeved up also in there and 
They didn't care that it was a common. They thought it was really nice. And I was going over one of my videos and I saw that I pulled four of these in a row. And But when I actually pulled them, I didn't notice or I didn't really care. I was just having a good time collecting. And 10 years ago, I never looked up prices. I did look up lists and I tallied them and checked all the ones off that I got and it was tons of fun and 20 years ago I didn't do either I just opened a pack and very often I there were multiple cards in the pack that I enjoyed and I didn't know what a common was or an uncommon or a rare I knew just hollow and non hollow and I liked the cards that I liked that MetaZoo, in a lot of ways, has brought that feeling back for me, and it's been so nice, and I've already opened four boxes of Cryptid Nation, and I'm still loving each card, and I'm examining them further, and maybe it's just because it's a new thing, and new things are exciting, but it's hard to say. I do look up cards for MetaZoo, but I haven't looked up the prices, more just like Oh, the cool, interesting sets like the Obnoxious 9 and the Unlucky 13 that I've only ever really heard about price in videos and not really looked up myself. That I used to look up the value of all my hits after opening and now I find I'm just looking at my hits after opening. And it's reminded me of when I was a kid and I'd keep these in my bedside table and I'd pull them out at night and just have a nice look at them and enjoy them for what they were, not the value they'd be in the future, but just what they were to me then at that moment. And maybe it's a problem with me and my mindset has changed over time and it's not so much a problem with the trading card game industry. But it's hard for me to say, and it's maybe my age also, but I'm going to be holding a couple boxes of MetaZoo, and if the value went to nothing, I'd be perfectly fine with that. And I'd open them 10, 10 years down the road, and I'd have tons of fun reliving the experience I had in these times. And I guess I view it as an investment into the fun of my future at the very least. But I think when people buy a product for speculation rather than love of the exact product, not just the brand, I think it's a lot less likely for products to find returns. And I think when speculators come in who have no interest in the product, it starts to get a lot harder to say any price increase will happen at all because the product may be valueless to the speculators. And I guess that's why I didn't really get into the uh, playing cards of MetaZoo. I was going to get them, but I was thinking I was just more of a speculation and it wasn't necessarily something I loved or had a big interest in. And I feel like there is just a lot of that going on in the trading card industry nowadays, but maybe that's just me and I'd love to hear what you think if you feel like you're having the same feelings or not, but thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.